Hello and welcome to another episode of Chocolate Cake on Tuesday. I am your host, Charlotte Emma. Welcome to my lounge. Welcome to another episode. Today I'm very excited. We have just recorded with Christiani Castro. She is a dear friend of mine from Freedom City, the church I go to. We were having a conversation about controversial topics and immediately I realized she would be the perfect person to have a conversation with. I was originally planning for this episode to just be like my normal one, more narrative and teaching, but actually I think we learned so much more through this conversation. So it's as if God knew because I wasn't planning to go to the coffee shop that day and I met her there and yeah, it was just, I think, a divine appointment. I believe that Chris's view on relationships, her knowledge of the word, and her desire for a spiritually healthy and mature church makes her the perfect guest for this episode. Make yourself comfortable and grab yourself a slice of chocolate cake and let's begin. Hello everyone and happy Tuesday. You're listening to Chocolate Cake on Tuesday. I'm Charlotte Emma. Thank you for tuning in. Today we have a very special guest. Cristiani Castro is joining us today. She is my friend from our church and we connected over the topic of controversial issues, how to talk about them. Welcome, Christiani. Thank, Thank you for being you. here. Thank you. I'm very <laughs> glad with this invitation. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Where you um, so my name is Christiani. I am from mm. Brazil. Yeah. And I have been living here for two years now. Okay. It's gone by quickly. By very quickly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm from uh, Campinas. That's a big city close from Sao Paulo. Oh, yeah. And I am in Lisbon because it's very close of the culture in Brazil. Yes. I can say yeah. Portugal is home for Brazilians in mm -hmm. Europe. Yeah. And then before I lived four years in Ireland. Okay. Just to learn English. Wow. And then I just move here. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. And I'm very glad that you live in this city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am very glad that you are here today. Thank you. Um, I, I'm very glad. I think it's an <laughs> opportunity to share you know, knowledge and opinions, mm. and also it's a good opportunity to, you know, do yeah. a reflection about a topic that's very important. Yes. And also yes. it's about people. Yes, exactly. And mm. I remember someone saying that relationships are one of the most important things in our lives. It's like one of our top mm. needs is to have relationship with people. It's where we get our sort of acceptance from and, and we, where we get, uh, can find belonging. And it's like one of the top ways I think that God can speak through us is through relationships. And yeah, we really value it in the church. But what I was just recently, this topic came up and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, what about these issues that come up that seem to put our relationship at stake? Because it causes some of these topics can cause division. And I'm so nervous of this. Mm -hmm. I'm so nervous of how even in the church, how some topics can cause division. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's important to have this conversation today. I because, agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he, uh, he, when we saw Jesus' life, he always put people in mm -hmm. front of topics. Mm -hmm. He always care about people, love people, try to understand people. Mm -hmm. And then for me, it's an example. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we put the person in front of any problem or issue or even different opinion mm, yeah. because if we put our reasons yeah. before it yeah. we can lose the person and I, I don't think it's nice you know yeah hundred percent i'll first start by telling you a little bit of what controversy is controversy is basically any it's in discussion of any topic of something that will cause probably a heated argument or a disagreement. Usually it involves disagreement between larger groups of people. It can be two people, but it can also divide nations. Sometimes it can cause, it, it can be within religion or politics, anything like this. 
but it's not doesn't always bring division it sometimes is a very it's a it can be a fun topic that people will choose to talk about because they want to debate or come to some understanding i have a question for us to answer which is yeah basically what is your narrative of controversial topics which is to say when you think of a controversial topic and talking about it what do you think mm-hmm. is does that scare you does that excite you how do you think about these conversations mm-hmm. i think when is a controversial topic yeah. it's something that we need to of course careful because okay. everybody has a different opinion yes But I think it's very nice when you're sharing different opinions. Mm. Because we always can learn with someone that there is a different point of view. Mm. Especially if it's a good conversation about. Mm. Because we don't have the 100% uh, of it true. Yeah. And all, everybody has a different thing that we, we believe. Yes. But of course, if it's the conversation is going to the wrong way the, for okay. our discussion, yeah. I think it's... Uh, is smart and if you just mm. avoid that mm. okay. because we cannot change opinions of a third person okay. and yeah. if it's just a discussion I think he, we are not add anything from for your life and then and not for the personal life yes. I, think he, I don't know if you agree with that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. understand mm-hmm. that it's yeah when you say we can't change the person mm-hmm. it's true oftentimes we go into these conversations and we're as you said earlier actually I really loved what you said when we put the reason above the person and so we're just basically trying to convince or prove our point I think what you're saying is you enjoy the controversial topics when we can talk about it mm-hmm. to come to some sort of understanding together, not mm-hmm. necessarily agree, but to discover something yeah. about the person. But as soon as we try to prove our point and make sure that our point is right and, and we change their mind, it's actually not going to work, first of all, because yes. we can't, like mm-hmm. I agree with you. And yeah. second of all, that can just... Yeah, cause a, a bitterness and a closeness maybe between the people. Yeah, yeah. and also one, one thing that I feel is nice if you have this kind mm. of co- good conversations mm. is understand why these people believe in this way or have this yeah. argument yeah. and we can discover new things that we not uh, even mm. know. Uh, yeah. Not necessary. we need to agree with 100%. Yes. But I just uh, do believe that a few points is is yeah. very good to discover and to learn. We always learn when we have a conversation with someone. Wow. Uh, I don't believe that good conversations, we cannot add anything for our lives. Even the person has mm. a total different my, a mind or opinion about a, a, a topic. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Agreed. 100%. I think it would actually be mm-hmm. good to, for my mind anyway, mm-hmm. to yeah. think of a, a, a controversial topic. Because it can mm-hmm. be a little bit in the clouds, controversial topic. Like, yeah, what is yeah, this? Yeah. I haven't thought of any. <laughs> I don't have any in the notes. Do you have any ideas of a controversial topic that, that you find has in the past brought a lot of opposition from a person mm-hmm. or is a lot of heat yeah. in an argument? Yeah, I think I have a good example that okay. is very big and hu- huge in Brazil, to be oh, honest wow. with you. But it's about politicians. Okay. On okay. the right side and left side. Yes. We have uh, almost 50% of population in one side okay. and 50% in another side. Okay. And it's wow. very good when we listen different sides. Mm. Because every side first has something good mm-hmm. and something bad. Mm-hmm. And then we can understand a little bit more of the person, why mm. uh, the beliefs is about this mm. side or that side mm. and we can learn about yes. that yes. Uh, of course every time we need to know that we are gonna listen maybe things that we not believe in we don't even agree yeah but our side is having something good okay. in the history and right now okay. and then personally of course i have it as something that i believe yes but if i i listen people from another side yes. i am very glad to listen oh very good that in this side that we don't have oh wow okay uh, yeah. so you and listen yeah for the good things right yeah. and i think it's very smart yeah. and we can grow as a person yeah 
Yeah. Is it does it mm -hmm. cause like mm -hmm. division in Brazil? The yes. Po like politics. Importantly, yeah. inside of families, inside of churches, really? inside of our places, okay. is kind of a problem in Brazil right now okay. because in, in Brazil both sides are not right mm -hmm. in this way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why people take sides mm. and looking for the best to the country. Yes. I can see so far. Everybody that believes in some mm. side is, is for the best. Wow. But of course, giving opinions um, shock people. Yeah. And then that's why I just feel if people are more open yeah. to share ideas and understand why you believe in this side or that side, yeah. you know, it will be uh, better. Yeah. I yeah. love what you mm -hmm. said there. You said they're all wanting the, the best for the country. Mm -hmm. And I forgot yeah. about that. It's actually so good to... When you're looking at a person and they're mm -hmm. obviously you're disagreeing, it can be very personal and hurtful, but we look at them and we think we both want the same thing at the end of the day. We both mm -hmm. want the best yeah. outcome for whoever is involved. And then when you look at them like that, you maybe will have more grace and more patience of it because you realize that their heart is for the country and for the people same mm -hmm. as you they just have a different way of getting there yes and also i think he, uh, everybody inside they have a lot of again, maybe frustrations or pain and the opinion yeah. or even the side uh, independent of the topic yeah uh, probably comes from uh, what you have living your life yeah. or the people that you have meet you know mm -hmm. our history behind of opinions mm -hmm. and beliefs mm -hmm. that's why i think we need to be very careful and also love these people yes. with different opinions. Yes. Because no one just have an opinion to boring another person. But no, yeah. probably is the truth of their lives. Yeah. You know. So good. Yeah. So one controversial topic that came up for me in the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks was yoga. Yeah. I mentioned mm -hmm. this the other day. And yeah, in the church, this can be a controversial topic specifically mm -hmm. because it's an Eastern practice, which is not Christian, but mm -hmm. it's also a form of exercise and taking care of your body. So there's, there's a lot of different views on this. Mm -hmm. And I kind of didn't realize that. So I mm -hmm. was, yeah, doing my, so for mental health, I was doing my yoga every day, like mm -hmm. stretching, whatever. And then the topic came up on a WhatsApp group and all of these videos were being sent of it's what you're actually doing when you're doing yoga you're worshiping other gods and you're yeah like all the the spiritual stuff that can be happening at the same time and I don't think there's a right and a wrong but it was so good when it came up because I realized so it didn't make me change my mind about yoga mm -hmm. but what I did do was I, I didn't do it for about a week and I just learned about it a little bit every day like Actually, I've never asked myself this question. Is it worshipping someone else or is it worshipping God? So I, I didn't change my mind about it, but it definitely made me stop and think, mm -hmm. why am I doing this? And then after a week, I kind of, yeah, like still I'm not 100% sure, but I am pretty convicted that I still would do it, but I would be more careful about talking to other people about it making sure that I explain it properly so that they don't get the wrong idea about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't do it with a friend who is totally against it. And yeah, it made me become more sensitive for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think it's, the, the reflection is always good. Yeah. I think it, with everything that we do, yes. for me, I think I, I have done this reflection about a lot of topics as well. So good. Most of related with music and art, okay. these kind of things that I love. Like what you listen uh, to or not? Listen to or even sing a cue, you know, this kind of. Yeah. But I think the, about the reflection, first it, it goes, you know, your heart and mm -hmm. you know why you are doing, mm -hmm. you know. I think he, if he, if he put everything in a box yeah. because of the history or what people are doing, maybe we, it's not the real truth for ourselves, yeah. yes. you know. And I can see example in this mm. example, you are very yeah. healthy, eat very good, mm. and it's some, a part of the sport of your life. Yeah. And then I cannot relate it with another thing or even a idolatry or something yes. like that. Yes. 
when when we put something in a yes. box, yes. it's not the truth for everybody. I, I can say one example of that. Mm. In Brazil, we have a lot of kind of Catholic, Catholicism and Protestants. Okay. And uh, sure. so far, I can say that uh, the image of Christ will never ever be in a Protestant church. Oh, wow. But we have a famous band, a, a Protestant band, yes. that put a Christ in the CD of them, oh, in the album. Okay. But now, so Protestants, they believe in Christ, but they won't they have Christ, They the don't use images, yes, yes, of Christ. Okay, no images, yeah. okay. But there's a famous band outside yeah. of Brazil that okay. they put it. Uh, because probably for them it's not a problem and they, they are still Protestants. Okay. Uh, that is important. very tricky because yeah. if we put in a box, uh, we will never use. But yeah. if your heart is not that, I think it's acceptable, you yeah. know? And everybody that is a Protestant sing music from this band because this is very <laughs> famous in the world. Yes. But no one, wow. you know, speak about that. Wow. Because everybody knows that the heart is known. Yes. It. Of course, a few things uh, we cannot just make like exceptions it. or. Yes. But it's, it's yes. in some point, kind of yoga, you know, so, we, we yeah. can speak about and see different yeah. points of view. Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. That's actually very interesting. Well, probably, yeah, yeah. And probably takes us to the next part of the conversation, mm -hmm. which is. What are these things that we can excuse? Okay, the picture on the album cover is we don't do that, but we listen to the music and we believe the same thing, we'll sing the songs. Because sometimes we can't be too nitty-gritty about everything, right? Like some mm -hmm, things we excuse. True. Yeah. Uh, because it's from a different culture, you're right. We, It doesn't fit in our box, but it's still, their heart is in the right place. But then there are some things where we can't support that we don't want to do that ourselves because it violates our value in such a way that I don't know like it there's a difference right mm -hmm. have you noticed that there are some things that you're like this is black and white you can't yeah I think yeah. it's important to say that we have a, a Christian vision about mm -hmm. the world this is the point of view of Christians and then you don't have a different opinion just mm -hmm. be free yeah. but it's good to just listen what Christians believe yeah, yeah that's true I think this is very good I uh, think to, to point here yeah. uh, but as a Christian I think the basis of the Christianism we cannot negotiate we can exemplify we, we believe in one God mm -hmm. and the salvation through Christ, a few things that is a base of your faith, mm -hmm. usually we, we cannot negotiate. Mm -hmm. Usually, no, 100% mm -hmm. we cannot yeah. negotiate. Yeah. Because is what uh, we believe is because of that we call Christians. Yeah. But few topics, for example, how do the church, how do the service, mm -hmm. then we can negotiate. And also, we need to understand that we are different people, and then yeah. we have different thoughts and minds about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, when I was studying a little bit about this, mm -hmm. the words that someone else used to differentiate these things mm -hmm. were the two, almost the two different categories of things mm -hmm. that are being spoken about is truth and personal conviction. Mm -hmm. And truth, I feel like we could do a whole another episode about because yeah. <laughs> what is truth? I think a very popular phrase nowadays is, you can have your truth and I'll have my truth. Yeah. But then for me, that discounts the word truth. For me, that's personal convictions. Like mm -hmm. you can have your personal conviction, something that you believe in, that you've decided for yourself when you became an adult, probably. As mm -hmm. kids, I think we go with the flow of what our parents believe when it comes to religion, politics, how we do life. And then when we, there's like a point, probably when we're teenagers, when we start to yeah. sometimes rebel against these mm -hmm. things and we're like figuring it out yeah. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then in our 20s, we kind of maybe come into this like settling thing of, okay, yeah, this is what I feel comfortable with. And I mm -hmm. think that that can happen with personal convictions. I think truth is a controversial topic. People yeah, have different yeah. opinions of what truth That's is. True. So mm -hmm. the only way I can speak about it, as you pointed out earlier, is mm -hmm. uh, from a Christian's perspective, because that's the viewpoint that I look at truth. I'll talk about it like that, but it might be <laughs> different for other yes. people. Mm -hmm. But when I'm having a controversial conversation now, 
I think I want to try look at are we talking about truth that's in the Bible? If you lie for someone, it's not nice. Yes, you know exactly. Uh, I think there yes. are if you kill someone, it's not nice. Don't that lie, is not don't weak, murder. You know, so good. Yeah, inside of Bible and also outside of Bible. Yeah, uh, that's why is the truth that uh, no one is gonna negotiate. Oh, that is kill someone is something good or not? <laughs> Probably that's you're true. not gonna see. Yes. Uh, someone just goes about that. Exactly. You that's know, this usually this is hundred percent true. Yeah. you know. Yeah, and the Bible speak very. Clear Clear about this topic yeah. yeah that's so true that's that's an easy black and white no we don't kill people yeah. <laughs> we don't lie that's mm-hmm. a pretty and and i think everyone agrees with that as well based yeah. on their personal yeah. convictions yeah. as well and cc leo say something very good about that that yeah. we we were born with this sense of what is right and this wow. we have is not right and then for me is uh, something uh, from creation of god wow. you know we were born that we if we kill someone that's not nice yeah. no one needs to say even say yeah. it for you yeah if you hurt someone it's not nice and the bible uh, of course is very clear about these topics mm. but we can say it's something that inside of us as well yes. what yes. is very clear yes. and these topics we can negotiate independent yes. of the opinion of someone yes it's you almost know? like it's yeah. that the holy spirit inside of us yes even uh-huh. from when we're we're little being like we feel guilty as a child when we steal something. Yes. I remember uh-huh. I stole like some chewing gum or something from my mom's <laughs> handbag because I'm supposed to ask and I didn't. Yeah, and I yeah. felt so guilty. But it's not because I read in the Bible, don't steal <laughs> chewing gum. No, I probably read don't steal, but still it's that feeling, you know, yeah, yeah. that you're talking Even from about. our parents that are kind you know. of everything that is from then is from as for us as well. Yes. Yes. But yeah, yes, I think he, this is a very good example. Yeah. You're not really kind to steal something because it's from your parents. Yeah. But this feeling of, oh, I'm doing something wrong, yeah. is something that the Holy Spirit mm. touches. Mm. And I think everybody has it inside. Mm. We are made uh, to uh, know what is good and what is uh, yeah. bad. Yeah. And then we can have these uh, decisions. Yeah, so good. Mm-hmm. And that can guide us as well. When you're having a controversial conversation Mm -hmm. and you feel the heat inside of you come, I don't know if you felt this, but you're talking and you feel like what you believe is it's making you feel a little bit tense, a little bit almost passionate about what you're speaking Mm -hmm. about. When you said earlier, you put the person in front of the reason. Mm-hmm. How do you love the person mm-hmm. that you don't agree with? Yeah, I think he, usually what comes to my mind is mm-hmm. respect okay. that everybody uh, deserves. Okay. Respect the opinion, different opinion. Yeah. I think this is the first thing that I think, not even love, but yeah. respect. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Yes. And, and also put myself in a position that mm-hmm. I don't need to force my opinion from someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we can show sometimes in different ways, mm-hmm. especially if we're speaking about God, mm-hmm. that someone not believe, not even believe mm-hmm. that we have, and then we can be friends of these people mm-hmm. because I think the friendship is not made when we agree with a person, mm-hmm. but is when we love and we try to love this person. Yes. That is very deep in the way that it's easier, you know, if you just have friends that feel the same opinion, yeah, and even boring, <laughs> we cannot share yeah. different opinions. Yeah. That's why, personally, I have friends from a lot of different opinions, different backgrounds, wow. and this, uh, we can grow. Wow. Of course, uh, knowing uh, that I have my own convictions, wow. but it's very good to share with these people. Wow. The different wow. opinions. So yeah, it can actually like be good to have these I think so. Yeah, for yeah. growth. Yeah, yeah. For, for in my side and I think for the person's side. Yeah. But I think respect is the first thing. Okay. And try not convincing anyone or force opinions. Yeah. And try to just to be nice yeah. and... I think it, mm-hmm. the relationship is something precious in our life. Mm, yes. I can be very wrong on that, oh, but I just do I believe agree, it. I agree. You just touched on why controversial conversation can be mm-hmm. good. And mm-hmm. that's actually something that I really want to just stick on for a little bit because mm-hmm. I think we talked about narratives earlier. And yeah. I think one narrative is that controversial conversations cause division. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah. 
possibly a lot of the time they do we see it happen nations and in people groups and even some married couples churches they divide because of mm -hmm. disagreements that they couldn't solve but they couldn't live with the fact that they disagree right mm -hmm. but how let's talk about like how it can be actually so helpful to disagree and have these conversations mm -hmm. like why is it good when we were mm -hmm. having a clothes swap here at our house the topic of modesty came up because mm -hmm. we were trying on different clothes and I said I just brought up the topic as woman I knew I, I was kind of making it a little bit more controversial than it needed to be but I said mm -hmm. is it our responsibility to dress modestly to protect the man from his own desires. This is how I phrased the question. Okay. Oh, that is very good talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was, we didn't talk about it to the extent that I think I wanted to, but what came out was so interesting because it turned out that one of the girls in our group mm -hmm. was from a country where it, it's very conservative. Okay. Yeah. And I never mm -hmm. knew that about her country. Mm -hmm. I never knew that about her. So first of all, I learned something about oh, her. Oh, that's good. <laughs> which is good. And uh -huh. because we were talking about it to understand, mm -hmm. none of us were trying to prove a point we were literally trying to understand the what should we do as women mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah she was explaining how where she was from like you would cover your hair and okay. and you can't show your knees and and for her coming here just wearing pants was mm -hmm. very bold whereas from some other cultures as we know like from South Africa or even Brazil we have very open cultures yeah, especially very warm as well very warm. <laughs> Like, yeah. You live in your bikini and it's yeah. very different. And also what our churches, you know, accept as normal is so mm -hmm. different. So that was one of the biggest things I learned mm -hmm. was about my friend, mm -hmm. where she comes from, how she's being brought up and, and how this world where we are, Portugal right now, is looks like to her. So I learned about her culture mm -hmm. and about her as a person. And I don't think that would have happened unless we asked about this question. Topic. Yes, Maybe. that is very interesting. I, and I, I also, I think she learned about yeah. why Portugal is so open here. Yeah. And then uh, another people were like, oh, why we are so close? What's behind uh, this story? Yes. You know, even if you have, of course, opinions a little bit more open about mm -hmm. this topic mm -hmm. because of your culture is the country that we are from. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but it's yeah. so good. <laughs> That's a very good uh, example on that. Yeah. In the church in Brazil, I saw yeah. girls with kind of uh, shirts uh, yeah. and kind of just tops not cover yep, everything mm -hmm. and no one's saw or looking strange mm -hmm. because it was so warm you know yeah everybody yeah. dressed kind of the same <laughs> okay that's normal that's normal uh, and then i think of course if you are using the same clothes in a country that's more closely yeah i think it's about also to respect the culture of so the place good. that we were I don't think it's wrong at all, yeah. but I think it's more thinking about uh, the person that is close to yeah. you, you know, yeah. put people in front of our so culture, good. you know, why not, yeah. uh, if we can uh, do something nice, yeah. something that we can relate it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, when, so yeah. this makes me think when I go now to a different country, like I went mm -hmm. to Israel a, a few mm -hmm. years ago, and I remember mm -hmm. taking, or they give you on the tour, um, like a scarf that you can put over your shoulders mm -hmm. and you yeah. don't wear I think we could it's I can't remember the exact rules mm -hmm. because the Middle East is different in every country but yeah. I think we could mm -hmm. wear pants but we couldn't show our knees or yeah we always had to cover our shoulders especially in um, holy places mm -hmm. and I think to go in and be like no but from my culture this is what I wear. I wear strap shirts. I, I show my shoulders. I'm not ashamed of my shoulders. And I walk in. As you mm -hmm. say, that's so disrespectful of their culture. And I'm not putting the person before my principles. And that reminds me of a verse mm -hmm. from 1 Peter. And I can't mm -hmm. remember <laughs> the verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it speaks mm -hmm. about a vision that Peter has, right? Where mm -hmm. he says, where God sort of gives him plates of food as options that he can eat mm -hmm. that are not 
acceptable for his culture. And I think this is after Jesus has gone up to heaven and Peter now is going to be the rock of the church. So I think it's important that he understands this. And he is given these options of meat and he says, I won't eat them. I can't. It's against my culture. And I can't remember if it's a god or an angel or a messenger says, if I say, the Lord says, eat them, then eat them. Yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I think, and then he... I can't remember the exact story, but someone went to deliver this message to someone else. And this sort of was representative of, I think, the Gentiles being accepted now into the church under Jesus's blood. And Mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you've got a lot of different cultures, Romans, Greeks, Mm -hmm. Hebrews. And I think he was talking about this controversial things. Mm -hmm. How do we live together in unity for the sake of my brother? I will eat these, but if it offends, if it if he struggles with this and it trips him up, if it makes him stumble, mm. then I won't. I think it is a good example yeah. to put people uh, yeah. in front of our, our beliefs or the culture that we have. Yeah. I think Paul speaks about it as well, yeah. I remember. Uh, and then I think it's very important, this example. I And I know also in, in the Bible they say about... Uh, not eat pork, mm-hmm. especially on the beginner. Yes. And I saw a, a preacher about that. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know how to conserve, how to care about pork, it can be very unhelpful. Oh, That's why okay. the law yeah. was made on the be- on the first place. Yeah. Because people don't know how to do it. They would die. And prob- <laughs> exactly. And yeah. probably uh, when Peter or, or Paul allowed that, uh, probably they have the knowledge how to do that. Yes. That was, okay, no one is going to be killed about exactly. the pork food. Yeah, they you know, <laughs> know how to cook it properly. Exactly. No. And this is very interesting, especially in, in the Bible, uh, when there is a no, there is a, a reason behind. It's yeah. no just, oh, I, I am not allowed that because... Mm. Of nothing, you know, yes, this is very exactly. interesting because uh, if you put a- a- everything on a box, mm. sometimes even Jesus say, Oh, I- actually, people are more important of this ruling. Really. He has some examples that what he-, he made, and also when the woman she made very uh, something very bad with her husband, Jesus say, Oh, excuse yeah. me, I just chose to love her, yes. and then he can change her life, you know. Yes, please, not, not Judy. Yes. It was no, like I'm gonna just change her life. Yeah. You know, that that scene as well where in the Bible mm-hmm. he I think maybe it's the same one where the woman comes and he the Pharisees bring her to him and they're like the Bible says we should stone her because she's cheated on her husband mm-hmm. and he said, yeah. Okay, let the first one who hasn't sinned throw the first stone. Yeah, and, and the interesting the discussion is uh yeah, she, what she did is wrong. Yeah. This is a hundred percent belief. We agree with we that, are yeah. not yeah, we are not uh changing it. Yeah. But we try to just love it. Yeah. You know? That is yeah. something that we can relate with controversial yes. opinions. Yes. Of course I maybe I will not agree with you or your opinion or something wrong that yeah. you are known. For example someone that maybe lie on the time, mm. you know, but we can love we can still speak with the person in a good way and this is very good about relationships that we can make a difference in people's lives yes so good my podcast highlight for this episode is none other than vox recordings today explained it is a podcast that I have really enjoyed, introduced to me by my husband. He was sitting behind the camera today. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. It is basically a news report in your pocket, explained in around 30 minutes. Really interesting. They get all the facts and they have people from all over the world speaking. It is as it's happening. They do an episode every single day. No, they don't. Okay. They do an episode every working day at least. I can't remember if they do one on the weekend, but I think it's Monday to Friday, five days a week. Basically, what is happening in the world that day? It's really up to date, really fascinating. Give it a try. It's called Today Explained. Please check out the link in the show notes. Also, 
I'll be referencing some links to the Bible verses we referenced today, as well as a link to Chris's personal Instagram account, as well as a link to her business Insta. If you are interested in any financial questions, if you are single or a couple or a small business, she offers really good insight and advice into how to plan your financial life. Jeffrey and I have both had meetings with her and it's really helped us to have a more solid plan around where we spend our money, how we spend our money. And since we've had that meeting, we've actually saved a lot more. So go check that out in the show notes. Controversial topics have existed since humans have existed, I think. It's true. But social media has added such an interesting twist because people will have these arguments, heated arguments sometimes, mm -hmm. over Twitter or what's the new name for Twitter? I can't remember. X. <laughs> Just X. Yeah, and Facebook and let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I think social media in general, because I am a millennial. Okay, okay, yeah. Change all the way that we live. Whoa. Change everything, how we, the relationships that we have. For example, I can remember on the past, yeah. I used to call for my friend's house. Yeah. And then we have a relationship with our parents. Oh, wow. We know the name, I know the names of your, our parents of my friends when wow. I was children wow. and even teenager really? because we don't have your phones we not we can't couldn't speak directly with the person oh, usually so the parents the take the phone yes. and say oh hi and then Charlotte is like he I don't know on, on, on the beach today she's gonna yeah. arrive by five oh, you wow, know that's so cool yeah, yeah and then we have different relationships yeah. For me, texting mm -hmm. is such an easy way. Like, okay, so when we were working online, even over mm -hmm. COVID, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember a couple with my colleagues, like sometimes there would be things that we would uh, disagree on and just as a group and messages would start coming through and it's hard to be respectful over message for some mm -hmm. reason. I feel like when I'm talking to a person, I'm looking at you and I'm mm -hmm. hearing myself. I'm a lot more tempered, controlled. But when I'm just typing, it's like I'm just looking at my phone and I'm just typing whatever. And I'm reading mm -hmm. what I'm typing and I'm like, this isn't very kind. Yeah, it's a different sort of environment to be it's working true. through, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he, with a text, it can happen a lot of misunderstanding. I think yeah. you need to kind of double careful about, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what you are speaking because... Usually we can write something and the person can understand another different thing. Yes. Or even with another intention, depends yeah. how the heart is prepared for receiving the message yeah. so far. Yeah. I think about controversial. Personally, okay. usually I try to avoid the message. Yes. I am okay. like you, try to speak personally because yeah. the tone change, yeah. especially if I speak Portuguese, mm. we can say the same thing with a different tone mm. and change even the meaning. Mm. That is very interesting. I don't know if in English yeah. can be the same, yeah. but in Portuguese... Sure, yes. um, tone is so happen, important. Yeah. Often, like, I hear your words, but your tone is saying something different. So what do you mean? <laughs> and if it's just text, you're just reading the words, so you can immediately understand something different. Exactly. Would you recommend actually just pausing and being like, no, let's discuss this in person or give them mm -hmm. a call. Or... I, I think so. This yeah. is the best way, especially if it's something that is going for a wrong way or for a discussion or even, you know, a fight or something like yeah. that. I think it, the best thing is just speak. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you kind of phone or personally, yeah. but that's try to avoid that. I do it usually, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I'm actually, I don't have the answers to those, any of yeah. those. I'm a bit nervous of right now I'm getting onto Instagram a little bit more with the podcast mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, like when, so I posted a, an episode about Sukkot, which is at the festival of booths in Jerusalem that mm -hmm. happens in Israel every year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then just on the last day, a few days after I released the episode, they were celebrating Sukkot and then the whole, everything happened in the Gaza Strip, the missiles were sent and, and obviously there's a few different sides that one can be on. I stand with Israel, I stand with the peop the innocent people, I stand mm -hmm. like whoever you choose to stand with. And I'm like, do I post something? I don't know, just spoken about the Jewish festivals and I'm, do I 
let's say I do stand with whoever I stand with, do I now post mm-hmm. something on Instagram? And you see mm-hmm. people taking a stand politically or religiously on social media very openly. How do you feel about that? Do you do that personally? Yeah, I think when we post something or even do kind of podcast or put our, our faces like here on the yes. internet, we need to be prepared for everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's, it's smart when we put in the way that, uh, firstly, I, I am, I, if I have an opinion, a strong opinion about something, mm. it's my opinion, but I don't want to hurt if you have a different mm. opinion. I think mm. this is the thir- first thing. Mm. And also, it's very courageous yeah. because it's easier if we just have an opinion and we don't say anything. Mm. You know, when we we give your opinion, we we also have a, give opportunity for someone thinking about wow. agree or disagree. Wow. Internet, unfortunately, some people are not nice at all. Yeah. Probably, even if your opinion is very nice, some people will not agree and they will they will say to you. They will say so. They will say yeah. to you. you know, I just. If you put respect about uh, in front of your opinions, yeah. I think this is very nice. Yeah. Especially this topic about uh, Israel and Palestine. Mm-hmm. I, I have seen both sides so far mm-hmm. about the, the war and then everything. Mm-hmm. And innocent people are mm-hmm. in both sides, you know. Yeah. Someone was born in Palestine, someone yeah. about in Israel. They yeah. both are innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not because it's, there is a fight yeah. that people in both sides are... All of them I yes. have an issue. I yes. don't think so, you and, know. And then maybe we can apply what we've learned today, which is to look at the people's hearts. And actually, I think what a lot of people want is peace. And they want it for both sides. Mm-hmm. And they want peace for... They want peace and redemption or, or something for the innocent people. Mm-hmm. And we, but yeah. we all have different ways of coming to this. Different ways that we think will get achieve this, but at mm-hmm. the end of the day, we all want peace, and I think it's to remember that as yeah. well. And and also as individual, uh, we can. They, I, I just believe that they can be friends. Yeah. I saw something very beautiful mm-hmm. uh, in your uh, friends yeah. because we have Russians and Ukrainians. Yeah, yeah. And one day I just saw a Ukrainian uh, girl oh. uh, hugging a Russian woman. Oh. Wow. And they just feel love each other. Wow. How beautiful is it? Yeah. You yeah. know, they put so far people in front of the problems wow. of the, the war, in front of everything. Wow. When I saw it in the church, I just feel like, oh, yeah, we can be friends, yes. even everything happening yes. around. So you know, we cannot put the because our governments mm. are very complicated mm. you know mm. for example in my case brazilian government is very complicated okay. they have a lot of <laughs> issues you cannot say uh, brazilians or brazilians that you know are corrupt because mm. i have a lot of friends and uh, maybe 95 percent of my friends are very right you know even people uh, i don't have a lot of knowledge about yeah. I can see with these actions, oh, yeah. they are very right. You okay. cannot put in a box. Yeah. I think he, in this case of Palestinian uh, people from Israel, it's kind of the same. I just believe that uh, mm. there is people that just feel like, oh, I just need it to stop it. Yes, exactly. You know, That's uh, what we want. Yeah. They're just the exactly. war to stop. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay, cool. There is this concept as well that can happen on social media. So as well as heated arguments happening on social media. There's mm-hmm. this other phenomenon that we see happening. I'm trying to think if I've ever been involved, but mm-hmm. it's, it's echo chambering or just the phenomenon of echo chambers. So mm-hmm. on social media, you start to form groups around yourself with people mm-hmm. that believe what you believe and it's mm-hmm. exclusive to those people. And we because it's very easy to delete off a group or to remove, to unfriend, we exclude those people in our lives that we were saying earlier would challenge us, which causes Mm -hmm. growth in friendship, Mm -hmm. right? And we create around us, but we can do this out of social media. We create around us because of our fear of conflict like these, just like echo chambers of people who believe what we believe. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever found yourself in the space where you're like oh my gosh I'm not being challenged at all but ah, 
Yes, for yeah. sure. I yeah. think I can say so far for sure, you <laughs> okay, know? Okay, okay. <laughs> I think yeah. he, uh, as a woman, we need to be in a comfort zone. Oh. Everybody has like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, I'm not going to challenge myself. Yeah. I'm very cool here. Yeah. But I just realized in some point of my life that I was living in a bubble. And, uh, you know, when you don't have different friends or different people with different mm -hmm. opinions... Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I'm not even challenging, I'm not making difference, mm -hmm. I'm not growing, I'm not doing anything, of, yeah. you know. And then I make my decision with intention. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be surrounded of people as well yeah. that uh, have uh, different opinions than me, so good. you know. And then mm -hmm. was very good. And mm -hmm. I can see so far that, um, of course, we always grow, mm -hmm. but make difference in my life. Uh, yeah. And also when I moved to Ireland mm -hmm. uh, in 2018, okay. Just in the beginning of the year, uh, my first friend um, there and my best friend there yeah. is Japanese. Wow. That is exactly 24 hours of different <laughs> from Brazil. The other side of the exactly. world. Exactly. Uh, with a total different <gasps> culture wow, and then yeah. change me a lot. Wow. And change her as well. Yeah. Because I, I remember two other things in my life, in a Japanese culture, and I saw her change a, a lot as well for a Brazilian culture. You know, if we yeah, just spend all my life with Brazilians, uh, I can see so far I don't have a lot of change in my life. Because when we, have, we are inside of the culture, we are not thinking about, we just suppose that this is the way to live. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I for sure I have this bubble in my life and I just make it okay, let's just yeah. change and make my decision. Beautiful. Yeah. And <laughs> oftentimes those are the most precious uh -huh. friendships. When you form a friendship and you're so different uh -huh. and you end up challenging each other, changing each mm -hmm. other, that's so precious. Yeah, do you have this experience in Portugal me, as well? Yeah. I think it's yeah. easier here than it was in yeah. South Africa. It's very easy to get into that echo chamber because, as mm -hmm. you said, it's the same for you in Brazil. Like you're, You have the option, you're all born in the same place, you all mm -hmm. go to the same kind of school. It's very easy. And here, I was suddenly put in, Lisbon is full of internationals. So if I think our friendship is like this and I'm I think I found it difficult to make friends because I do have a bit of a fear of conflict because mm -hmm. I think I'm a I don't know if I like to put myself in a box but anyway I'm an Enneagram type nine and we mm -hmm. love peace. Right. Mm -hmm. So I found it difficult to make friends because I'm trying to so much to keep the peace that I'm not challenging and I'm not mm -hmm. being challenged. And it mm -hmm. took me, I would say, two years here mm -hmm. to be in a space where I felt comfortable to be myself mm -hmm. and to allow people to speak into my life where mm -hmm. it was challenging and maybe difficult to hear. And since then, this last year has been... Incredible. I want to cry oh, because I'm like, good. <laughs> this is what I was seeking. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the mm -hmm. deep friendships that I was seeking mm -hmm. that I thought came from like the conflict-free relationship actually mm -hmm. yeah. wasn't mm -hmm. happening. And as soon as I just opened my heart a little bit and became mm -hmm. a bit less private and yeah. mm -hmm. having these kind of conversations mm -hmm. that's more difficult, yeah. I found... The friendships are growing a lot more beautifully, mm -hmm. a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it uh, is, is risky when we yeah. open ourselves yeah. about uh, different people. It's, yes. it's a risky, yeah? Yes. yes. It's a risky because of the comfort zone. Yes. And uh, so far, even we have a kind of very good friendship, in some point, we yeah. are going to disagree with something. Yeah. Because we have a kind of different points of view, different cultures, maybe, mm -hmm. or even different beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I'm very glad that you have this. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> I actually want to ask you this one question I found mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Do you ever consider or ha has it ever helped you to have, and I think it has because I've seen it in you, but mm -hmm. uh, having humor when you are having these conversations, so telling a joke or laughing or making things a bit lighter in the conversation I yeah. think he, one day I was in a dinner and we have a disagreement between two people oh yeah and I was like 
like it. Trying to, I remember to just try to change a topic, you know, yes. just making questions outside of the, the problem. Yes. Yes, I have to make it. It's not easier, it's yeah. not easier, but I try to usually, when I saw disagreement between yeah. people, to speak individually, but usually I don't take a side. Okay. In my mind, probably yeah. I know who is wrong and who is not, <laughs> but usually I don't take a side. Okay. And if it's something very bad, usually I'm going to speak with the person individually outside of, you know, being in front of people, because I think it's sure. not nice. That's a good but point. I, in my personality, probably I will not be quiet. Yeah. I'm going to speak. Yeah. Because I'm so kind of like more, I don't know, I'm very talkative, you know, yes. I'm very strict about a few things. That's why I'm probably going to speak, but individually and also with love. Yes, so uh, good. Mm -hmm. When you're in the middle of a conversation, rather, if you can, don't bring it up. Take the person aside afterwards and be like, I want to find out why you said this, I don't agree. Or mm -hmm. just shed some light, what mm -hmm. you know. Yes, yes. and I, I can see the results. Uh, I mm -hmm. have seen a lot of people that they come back with very friendly shape mm -hmm. because I know when you have a disagreement, something difficult this and I, I can yeah. for example in my case if I have a kind of disagreement with someone I know that I can get very nervous yes and then I yes. just shut up stay yeah. quiet, quiet and then mm. thinking about and then I, I come back to the person in a very good way yes. I usually I do that That's good. because I know myself That's you know good. I don't know about growing mm. up if you guys mm. at the dinner table ever yeah. had these conversations where you disagree mm -hmm. but my worst thing was when we were mm. at the table and people would begin taking sides mm -hmm. because it felt so personal and also I felt like it's hard not to feel attacked or def like almost mm -hmm. defensive so I'm not anymore I'm not just talking about the subject I'm yeah. also mm -hmm. defending myself that I'm a good person and I think if you're on looking to people having a disagreement if you don't take sides then, then all of a sudden that uh, that person is able to have their discussion and not feel shame or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Especially if you take a side against them, it's, it can be quite hurtful and cause even more of a problem. Exactly, yeah. I think you just, uh, if we do that, we just put fire, you yes. know? Yes. And that is not point to do it. Yes. Uh, especially because if it's a disagreement, probably the sides are not changing their minds yes. and make more problems. Yes. You know? yes. Okay, and anything. Anything else that you felt on your heart that you wanted to speak about or say something helpful or, yeah, anything else? Yeah, I think about it, disagreements or even controversies. I think we need to, let's see how to say that. Mm -hmm. I think about the uh, disagreements, mm -hmm. okay? Like, it's not just about the controversies. Okay. But I think it is it always good to have a relationship with everybody, yes. as the Bible say. Yes. But sometimes it's not possible. Yeah. But I think it is very important if we do if we can do 100% of our side. Mm -hmm. We cannot control the other side. Sometimes it's impossible and no. people are sometimes inflexible or yes. I, I have a lot of pain inside yeah. or it's not the uh, moment inside but I always pray for mm. the relationship to be recovered yeah. you know e even is if it's not the, uh, at the same time or right now yeah. but with time I just believe that relationships mm. can can be recovered and uh, I think he we, when you do our 100% mm -hmm. with the help of God and also mm -hmm. try to be wise yes, you know yes. and ha asking help of God mm -hmm. to be wise with another person or for the, yeah. with the situation yeah. to be solved yeah and I'm really glad yeah. you brought this mm -hmm. up actually because I didn't think about it but there are so many people listening mm -hmm. who unfortunately have relationships that have ended or are uh, really struggling because of these Mm -hmm. topics that they these disagreements right and mm -hmm. knowing that we can pray for them and pray for the relationship and that we've seen I'm sure in the church as well I've seen mm -hmm. so many relationships especially between family parents and children being restored through prayer mm -hmm. and love even though they believe different things uh, we've seen restoration 
and God can heal relationships like that for sure. Yes. yes. Because uh, in the end of the day, we are humans. Yeah. And we can have a lot of techniques. Yeah. But we are fail in general, you <laughs> so know. Good, Chris. And that's why we need God and the loves God. Yeah. Uh, that's why the Bible say we can love because He loves us. Yeah. If we don't have the love of God, probably we cannot love another person. Wow. Of course, people that not believe in God has love. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe 100% yeah. on that. Uh, but I I think he, as a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, we believe that, that God comes from God mm -hmm. and is uh, how we do your life, mm -hmm. you know, trying to love another person mm -hmm. before or towards our faith or everything that we have inside of us. Yeah. With not love people, why we are here, wow. you know, I, wow. I don't think he, our life is cannot be far from love people, Yes, you know, I think yes. it's very related. That's why if someone is listening and don't believe in God, mm -hmm. I think, yes, of course, as a woman, we can love. Mm -hmm. But the perfect love is come from God. Yeah. Uh, it's something that we, we as a Christian we believe yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's so good thank you so much yeah, Chris thank, thank you for you. being here thank today yeah. it's been really cool to talk about this with yeah. you I, I really enjoy it I think I uh, I learn a lot as well with this conversation oh really that's yes good. To, to reflect you know about yes, these topics it is uh, because when we ref reflect about something you know it is fresh yeah. in our minds and in our hearts yeah. as well yeah very good so good thank Thanks guys for tuning in to Chocolate Cake on Tuesday. I am Charlotte Emma and we had a cool discussion with Cristiani Castro. I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope you did too. I'd like to end with a Bible passage. Just a few verses from Ephesians chapter 4 speaks about unity in the body. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. I hope that you have a blessed day ahead. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Chocolate Cake on Tuesday. Happy Tuesday! Thank you for joining me today on Chocolate Cake on Tuesday. If you want to hear more content just like this, don't forget to like this episode, leave me a comment, or if you're on Spotify, a review. Share this episode with a friend or family member and subscribe to my channel and show. There's lots more chocolate cake to go around. So how about... Another slice and some tea. Happy Tuesday!